Hello, this is Paul from 11 ta and today we'll be talking about how Australia is looking to keep its cultural identity by forcing streaming services to create more Australian content, rather than get flooded with woke Hollywood trash. So let's go and read about it. So this article is from Hollywood Reporter and wrote by Patrick Brzezinski. Australia to impose local content quotas on streaming platforms. The government promises necessary action to prevent Australian storytelling from being drowned out by overseas programming, especially from Hollywood. Australia is preparing to impose local content quotas on streaming platforms, such as Netflix, Disney Plus and Amazon Prime Video, the country's government said on Monday. Monday is 30th of January today at the time of recording and this article is January 30th, so this is fresh. The new scheme is part of a long in the making national cultural policy called Revive and the government promised that quotas would go into effect no later than July 1st, 2024. The framework unveiled Monday was conspicuously light on detail. Of course it was, it's government. However, with the precise share of local Australian content that global streaming services will be required to produce and distribute left to further negotiation. <sighs> Matt breath. On the surface, this doesn't seem like a bad idea. But then of course, when it's government mandated stuff, what are you gonna get? If the government are holding the purse strings, what kind of content are you going to get, regardless of it being Australian or not? The Australian government said Monday it would take necessary action to prevent Australian storytelling from being drowned out by overseas programming, especially from Hollywood and the US. The government has committed to take the necessary actions so that Australians continue to be able to see and hear quality homegrown content, regardless of which platform they are using. It is important that streaming services invest in key genres including children's content, scripted drama, scripted drama, and documentaries, the policy framework reads. The major US streamers, including Netflix and Disney+, Plus, are already producing some Australian originals, fair play, as part of their local content strategies, albeit in limited quantities. Netflix scored a breakout hit late last year with its revival of the cult Australian high school series Heartbreak High. That seems familiar, actually, I might have seen some of that. And Disney Plus has launched some local docu-series, including female sports show Fearless, the inside story of the AFLW and Shipwreck Hunters Australia. I've got no idea what the AFLW is. I'll probably look it up after I finish recording. Um, but yeah, okay, on this, again, on the face of it, it seems perfectly reasonable, hey? You know, just invest in local talent and, uh, you know, bring forward some decent Australian content. But with government, there's always a catch. The revived policy posits that Australians are now watching more content on streaming platforms than via traditional broadcasters, and that the local subscription video industry grew 50% in 2021 to 1.7 billion Australian dollars. Oh no, sorry, 1.7 billion dollars to 2.4 billion Australian dollars, that's currency conversion, in total revenue. The Australian screen industry has been lobbying its government for years to apply content quotas to the large global streamers. Screen Producers Australia has been pushing for a model under which platforms must spend 20% of their local revenue on Australian productions. But given the diversity of monetization models and the broad array of local and international partnerships streaming operators employ in Australia, hammering out the policy details remains fraught with complexity. Clearly defining what defies, sorry, clearly defining what qualifies as Australian content also remains to be decided. But of course, with all government policies, they're deliberately designed to be vague and uh, very nondescript because that suits them. If you introduce this policy, then who knows what you're going to get? Again, on the face of it, not a bad idea. But you just can't trust government, especially when they're controlling the purse strings. And also, with people lobbying government to say, we need this, we need that, you need to step in and do this, the government are going to manipulate that and, and they're just going to ruin everything. The Australian government says it will continue to hold consultations with the streaming companies and local industry groups until legislation is introduced in the third quarter of 2023. Industry observers expect the policy to include a required share of revenue that must be spent on Australian content. Requirements for privileged genres, such as documentaries and kids content, and minimum carriage quotas for discoverable Australian content on all platforms, among other trade terms. I've got mixed feelings about this because this almost seems like a 20% tax on streaming services. And then what kind of content are you going to get? Are you going to get stuff just squirted out that just to fulfill the quotas or are you going to get decent content? 
I mean, having watched a fair amount of Australian content over the years, um, there's some quite good stuff that comes out of it. Uh, I watched a TV show called um, Black Snow recently that starred Travis Fimmel. And it was about an, um, uh, an unsolved murder case that he cracked. And uh, it was great. That was a really good TV show. I enjoyed that quite a lot. Australian filmed, Australian owned, Australian actors. Brilliant. Yeah, something about government legislation and people demanding action as well. Because daddy government sits there and goes, are you sure you want us to get involved? Are you sure? Are you really sure? And as soon as people say, yes, we do, that's it. Bang, they've got you. Noose around your neck and you're done for. What do you think? Are you happy about this? Are you Australian watching this and happy about it? Let me know in the comments. And if you like the video and information that I read, then why not like and click on the old subscribe button?